Cody Snow from Los Lewis, California. Now I live in Stephenville, Texas. I started roping when I was about probably seven, eight off a horse and uh, didn't really join a rodeo until I was probably 11 and just kind of roped with my dad at the house a bunch and went to a little jackpot around the house. My dad grew up on a ranch and so kind of come from a little bit of a ranch and family. He's a vet and uh, he taught me how to rope. I just roped every day with him and so he was kind of Gave me my foundation of what I needed to do right and didn't really let me try to do the wrong things ever. <laughs> my dad, he had a really good work ethic about everything. He would never like cut corners and if he did do something, he'd give 100% and I think it's good because he was always on me about doing a good job. If I ever cut corners, I'd get in trouble for it and it now I'm appreciative of him doing that because I don't like mess. I don't I make sure all my stuff is taken care of. And I mean, he was really good about taking care of his horses, being a vet, you know. And so I always make sure my horses are sound and feeling good because that's usually the problem when something stops working, stops working, then they most likely there's a soreness and they're compensating for their being sore. So he just made me be really aware, and it's it's helped me out a lot. I mean, my most people's horses only go for about a year or two, and I've rode my horses. I mean. I'm going on three years now, and I rode them a couple years before that. Just, I mean, they've and they still feel really good to me. So, I think that helps a lot. Like, I don't have to, I don't run through horses very fast. I got two horses I roped on my buckskin mare, uh, Annie. I call her Annie, but her rest of name is I'm a Fresno SD. Uh, I bought her. She had, as a four-year-old, she had maybe 60 days of riding on her, and I just started uh, kind of day working on her and stuff, and then just kind of starting her roping and she ended up taking to it pretty well. She's always kind of a little bit goofy on the ground and kind of humped up a little bit but she ended up becoming a pretty good horse and she's been really good for me for a long time now. Another horse that I take with me everywhere is uh, Bert. Uh, I'm a Fresno troublemaker. He's a half brother to the buckskin mare, same dad. and. Uh, I bought him from my mom, actually. He came from Rick Machado. They showed him the snaffle bit as a three-year-old, and then my mom bought him. And then I kind of took him from from, from there, and uh, I rode him through junior high, high school. He was kind of a handful. Everybody kind of said he wasn't going to make it because he was so bad in the box and pretty strong. And out. I just pretty much used him as a practice horse, but I used him everywhere. Tried to do the best job I could when I did ride him, but. He ended up making a pretty good horse and two, so I got pretty lucky having two at the same time that I really liked. Once I got Bert to where he was pretty solid and honest, where I could rely on him, I took him to the Lucky Seven Open in Bullhead City, and uh, John Chavez and I won it, we won ten thousand, and I gave I gave nine thousand to my mom, and it cost a thousand bucks to enter, so I broke even there, and but then I owned the horse because she was kind of wanting to sell him, and I didn't want that to happen, so. I made sure I owned him from there on out. I've always rode green horses. I've um, every horse I've ever gotten that when they get solid enough to to really use, I've sold them. Besides the two I've been rodeoing on, I so for some reason I just never wanted to sell those two. And I think you'll know when you don't want to sell one, or what you'll know when you have one that you really like. And uh, so that's I've, I've I've rode a lot of horses, and uh, it's just a certain feel that. The guys gotta have for what they want, and this, both those horses really do what I want all the time.